Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to do an example, now that we understand the concept of a moment and that we understand the concept of a vector product. So we want to find the moment of the situation right here. Here we have something that can pivot about point O. It is inclined at an angle of 20 degrees. We apply a force at an angle of 35 degrees relative to the incline right here, and the magnitude of the force is 25 newtons. Also notice that this distance here is 8 centimeters, that distance there is 20 centimeters. So what is the magnitude of the moment and what is the direction of the moment? And we'll find that in two different ways. So let me show you two different approaches on how to do that. Well, first of all, the direction of the moment, which will act, of course, at this pivot point right here. We need to find the moment arm or the position vector from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. There's the position vector right here. Let's call that R. We know that the magnitude of the position vector is equal to 20 centimeters. So if you point your fingers in the direction of the moment arm and then you curl your fingers in the direction of the force, you can see that the direction of the moment is out of the board in that direction. All right, now we also have to find the magnitude. One way to do that is as follows. We know that the magnitude of the moment is equal to the magnitude of R cross F which is equal to the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between the two. So what is the angle between the two? Well, notice that this is the direction of the moment arm or the position vector. This is the direction of the force, and this would be the angle between the two, theta. And of course, this angle here is the same as the angle over here, so it's equal to 35 degrees. So you can look at it either side to find the angle between them. So to find the magnitude, we simply multiply the r, which is 20 centimeters, which is 0 0.20 meters. Then we multiply that times the force, which is 25 newtons. And then we multiply times the sine of the angle of 35 degrees. Okay, notice the units will be newtons times meters or newton meters. That's the unit of the moment. And so we have 0 0.2 times 25 times the sine of 35 degrees and we get 2.87 newton meters 2.87 newton meters and the direction would be out of the board now can we also find that using the typical vector product and the answer is yes we can we can say that the moment is equal to r cross f which is equal to the i, j, and k unit vectors, the magnitude of the position vector in the x direction, the magnitude of the position vector in the y direction, the magnitude of the position vector in the z direction, the same for the force, the magnitude of force in the x direction, the magnitude of force in the y direction, and the magnitude of the force in the z direction. So now what we have to do is find the magnitudes of all those forces. So coming back over here, we need to find the r sub y, and we need to find the r sub x. Of course, you can see that r sub x is in negative direction, r sub y is in the positive direction. Using the black color here, we can see that the r sub x is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 20 centimeters, that would be r, times the cosine of 20 degrees. And we can see that r sub y would be equal to r times the sine of 20 degrees. Notice I'm not worrying about the sine yet. We're simply worrying about the magnitude of those two components. The sine will, will come when we put them into the matrix right here. So this would be equal to 20 centimeters times the cosine of 20 degrees. And this is 20 centimeters times the sine of 20 degrees. And let's see what that is equal to. So 20 times 20 times the cosine equals that's 18.8 .8 centimeters, 18.8 centimeters. And for the y direction, 20, take the sine of that, times 20, that would be 6.9, 6.84, let's just call it 6.8 centimeters. So we have the two components of the position vector. Now we need to do the same for the force. Notice we have the force acting this way, it's 35 degrees relative to the slant, but that means it's only 15 degrees relative to the horizontal. So if we draw a horizontal line this way, we can see that this is only 15 degrees. So 
the x component will be in this direction, the y component will be down. Let's go ahead and draw those. I'll use purple for that. So here we can see that this would be f sub x, and here this would be f sub y. Okay, and of course the f sub y will be a negative direction. So let's use the board space over here. So we have f in the x direction is equal to f times a cosine of 15 degrees, which is equal to 25 newtons times a cosine of 15 degrees. And f sub y is equal to f times the sine of 15 degrees, which is 25 newtons times the sine of 15 degrees. All right, let's see what those are equal to. We take the cosine of 15 and multiply it times 25, and we get 24.1 newtons. 24.1 newtons. And for the y direction, we have 15, take the sine, times 25 equals 6.5 newtons. All right, so now that we have all the components, well, it might be a good idea to write the vectors out to make it easier. So we can see that r is equal to the x component, which is 18.8 .8 centimeters, but the negative direction, so minus 18.8 .8 centimeters. And that would be equal, that would be in the x direction. And it's positive, plus 6.8 centimeters in the y direction, and plus zero in the z direction, right? Because there's no component in z direction. And for the force, we can write, we have 24.1 newtons in the negative x direction, so minus 24.1 newtons in the i direction, plus, because it's upward, no, it is downward, it's also minus, so it would be minus 6.5 newtons in the y direction, and plus zero in the k direction. All right, so those are the two vectors. So now we want to plug those in here to find the vector product. We get the following result. So this is equal to, um, well, let's plug the numbers in, i, j, and k, r sub x, r sub y, r sub z. So we have a minus, and of course, we want to convert that to meters because that's in centimeters. So minus 0 0.188. And let me give myself a little bit more space, so it'll be too crunched here. My j, that's my k, like so. K, the j component is a plus 6.9 centimeters, so 0 0.068 and 0 for the k component. And for the f, it's minus 24.1, minus 6.5, and 0. All right, so now let's go ahead and work out the result. This is equal to i times... 0.188 times 0 minus 0 times this. So we get 0 in the x direction. We get minus j times. So when we cross out this column and this row, we have this number times this number and this number times this number. Again, we have zeros there. So we get 0 in the j direction plus k times. Now we're going to get a result. We multiply those two together and subtract one, multiply those two together. So we get a minus 0 0.188 times a minus 6.5 minus we get a 0 0.068 times a minus 24.1. Notice that we only have a k component surviving, which makes sense because we already knew that it will be coming out of the board. All right, so this is equal to uh, that would be 0.188 times 6.5. That becomes positive because the negative times the negative cancels out. And then we add to that because it's minus times the minus, that's plus. So plus 0 0.068 times 24.1 equals, and we get uh, 2.86 in the, and that would be, of course, Newton meters because it's Newton times meters in the, K direction. So did we get the same result? Well, slight runoff error. We had 2.87 Newton meters for the magnitude, and here we have 2.86 Newton meters in the K direction. So we got really close. Of course, there's a slight running error, but you can see how both methods will get you the results. Now notice this will only give you the magnitude. And you'll have to determine the direction using a right-hand rule. This method here will actually give you the result in a vector format 
and especially if there's an I, a J, and a K component, you'll get the magnitude of all three components, and then if you want to find the magnitude of the total, of course, you usually have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the total magnitude. But both methods are valid. Both methods allow you to find the moment of this particular situation. And that's how you do the problem.